Hey folks, welcome to the Code Organization Sub Project under SIGARX bi weekly meeting. Today is September 2nd. And uh, this meeting is recorded and we abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which boils down to be excellent to each other. And we have two items on the agenda for today. Uh, I'll actually like uh, take them out of the order because, like, the yeah, they're in the order. So, uh, if, let's I wanted to go over the fixing depth stat approach, which Liggett had suggested. So I'll share my screen and show what he had in mind and then what I did and where to go from there. Could you give me sharing permissions? I don't, okay, I have them, sorry. No, I don't, sorry. Got it, thank you. All right, so a little context, uh, when we switched to Go 1.17, uh, Debstat broke because they changed how Go mod graph behaves. So initially if A depended on B and B depended on C, then the Go mod graph output would be A to B, B to C, but now it also shows A to C, which uh, messes up with our approach of calculating dependencies. So uh, Lubume created this issue to track it and Jordan left some thoughts and the idea was to use go list dash dash JSON to recreate the go mod graph, graph output and we would then just same feed the same output to depth stack. So for uh, creating the output, so this is the command we tested and like I'll show you how an output looks so that you have more context. So this is basically too much JSON. So if we run a uh, go list dash JSON for each dependency, uh, we get this where we have an like import path and uh, then it's particular dependencies. And one of the important things is standard true, which tells if it's a standard dependency or not. So uh, Jordan's approach was that build a map of uh, from import path to the module uh, by which he meant. So import path would basically be the name of the dependency. And so yeah, import path would be the name and we would map it to this thing. And then we would also uh, store that if a particular dependency is a standard dependency or not in another map. And then he basically suggested to iterate through all of the dependencies which are uh, present in the depths. And if uh, it is not a standard dependency, which we would get from our map that would say it's false, then uh, create the go mod graph output, which would say that uh, this module go modules test depends on that. And then basically repeat the whole process. So I tried out this approach in a separate repository. Uh, which I link in the doc right now in case anyone wants to go over it. But this is not working and uh, one of the problems, one of like the major problems which I saw with this approach was, so take, taking this example, uh, this is the main module for our project which like the project go modules test and it only has two main dependencies which are supposed to be uh, Julian Smith HTTP router and zap. But uh, if you follow what like Jordan suggested and go through this list, you will see that uh, in its dependencies list, there's also this package called atomic and this is not a standard package. So if we just iterate through it and see that if it's not a standard package and make the link, then we would also be making the link that uh, the main module depends on this and this becomes a direct dependency, whereas it is not. So basically we are stuck with like, is goal is JSON the right choice here? If, and if not, then what? Uh, DMJ muted. In this case for the atomic thing, uh, does it also show up as one of the top level items? with its own dependencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take you to that. Uh, 
Yeah. And is there anything here? Um, it's so, indirect how, true, remember? It, you, you, there is an indirect true there. Indirect true, line 9505. Nine, yep. So, so that mean indirect true probably means that it is not listed in the primary go mod. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you can use as a hint? I think so. Yeah. So basically modifying Jordan's own approach before adding it to the link check if it's an indirect dependency. And Yeah. Think about it. I think all the information that you need should be there. It's just looking through it to see what exactly we should be using and not using rather both. And it also says DEP only. So look at what those fields mean, right? Right, yeah. All right. Anyway, the, the point is to figure out a way to uh, replicate exactly the output we used to get uh, from GoMod graph, right? And it, if I'm pretty sure that all the information you need should be here. Uh, that's basically what Jordan was hinting at. Like, don't go by exactly yeah, the steps that Jordan tells again. you to do. But <laughs> it's more like, you know, he's saying that all the information is there. Figure it out uh, from the information in the JSON. Cool, got it. If there is more information in the JSON that we don't need, it's fine. If the information that we need is not there, then it's a problem, right? then we probably end up um, going back to the Golang folks and say, hey, there is this information that we will rely on, we need, but it's not there. Is there a way to add it? Then it goes into a second con second set of conversation. All right, yeah, that makes sense. I'll take another look at this. All right. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is uh, about, it's a longstanding issue and it is about moving components out of KK. And this is a presentation which Lubome did when he was working on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, if you know that like uh, kubectl, kubeadm, code generator, all of them are present in KK, but a lot of them like uh, can be removed out and probably like should be removed out to break the monoliths. So we were working on a cap for that. And then we had some conversations and uh, we are basically looking that is this like what's what path should we take here because there are a lot of stakeholders there's like six cli so we were targeting like cube ctl first and so six cli folks have views on that sig release folks have views on that and the idea is basically uh is kept the best way to uh approach this or is a working group uh, a more better solution so we decided that like code organization meeting should be. Yeah, I think uh, even if you do a working group, you will end up writing a cap. So uh, yeah, there's no just no way out of it. And uh, from all the it's we all the discussions we've had before, nothing has changed. Like there is no additional information, or th there is no additional quirk uh, that we know of uh, that we will end up discovering going down the work group uh, route, right? And that's my feeling, um, you know, I may be wrong. Uh, and, and the point here is not just from the viewpoint of like Kubernetes from Q, what do we put in the Kubernetes release um, from outside, but it's more of like, how do we stand up standalone communities that can take care of these components, right? Like kubectl, 6CLI will take care of it. Like kubeadm, sick cluster lifecycle already has too many things, right? It, uh, and I have a feeling that kubeadm needs like a separate set of people that other than not just Lubomir, right? Uh, we need people who can help Lubomir uh, to like own it and run it and do all the things that, that are needed. Like similar to what you're trying to do with Depstat, right? Like uh, you're trying to get more people interested in Depstat and you know, you're know you owning uh, 
there is a group of people that are uh, interested in trying to do stuff right so similar to that we need for qbdm i think i i really don't know what the problem is anymore because i don't see a problem here uh, we've done this so many times before for other projects we use hcd from outside we use run c and open container open container run c container d like we this hundreds of components that we do this way i just don't know what what our problem is anymore sorry that, uh, that's my soapbox i also started questioning myself like what are we trying to solve with the whole split of the monolith and what was the original purpose of staging even uh i i guess i know what staging is doing it's allowing to split the repositories but the control still remains in kk in terms of what is pushed into these repositories right. in the case of kubkara they want to decouple from the release cycle i think i'm really glad that's that is the motivating factor and uh, you know it's a good thing yes but it creates uh, a lot of complexities and i think we are pushing a button without uh, i mean they are pushing a button without asking for instance surveying the users like what is going to be the level of disruption if we change the versioning between kubecurl and kubate uh, sorry kubernetes like uh, we're not asking anyone about that. Uh, who do you want to ask, Lubomir? For instance, we, I guess we did some surveys uh, when we uh, did working group LTS. We had uh, surveys asking people, like, how do you feel about LTS? We gathered information from other surveys, but we, we, we had something uh, as a data point to create a cap. I, I, I got you there, uh, Lubomir. He, uh, here is the thing, right? Like, if there is a version of Cube, Cube CTL that is shipped at the same time as KK, they can have other releases later, or, uh, you know, depending on if they're finding a bug or something. Like, if we can coordinate a release at that certain point, or if we do, uh, vendor directory and uh, the Kubernetes release, um, uh, you know, ships a binary of kubectl along with our artifacts, then all those, we don't have to go around asking people for things uh, that they don't even know what they are, they'll end up, uh, um, you know, happening, right? So uh, the simplest thing to do at this point is import, um, Cube, a specific tag of kubectl and we release a version of kubectl along with our um, KK, right? So that, that is the least di disruption. And if uh, uh, people have some problems and they need another release and they, they can pick off a release from the kubectl repository, you know, that is the way I was thinking about it. But, you know, it, it, somebody needs to drive this and that somebody but not me, needs to drive this. And if 6CLI is driving this, I'm like, kudos to them. And you, we can give them the feedback that do some surveys or whatever, right? Uh, but um, I, I'm not gonna stop them. I like, I really want this to happen and it's, it's high time and uh, we can't be dragging our feet forever. Yeah, it also becomes uh, uh, this particular document that we have on screen also points out some uh, problems related to how do we pick a right version of kubectl for a particular release. There are skew questions around the skew. There has to be a compatibility matrix. Right, uh, and it, it is owned by six CLI. It is not owned owned by code organization, right? Exactly, but but uh, given this is a SIG architecture forum, uh, do we want to? write some sort of a policy or should SIG release all that? Should it be a consistent uh, basically pattern for all the components that extract or should it be a, every SIG is going to do whatever they want? And we just prep this Kubernetes distribution in the end of the day. Uh, the, the way I was thinking about it, Lobamara, is we should, we don't know what are the, what are the kind of side effects and whatnot, right? So, we roll the dice with kubectl 
whatever we learn then we make the policy there is like if we don't it's hard to think that far ahead to do a policy now uh, and we should iterate uh, right like i don't want to bake in a policy right now i want to i want the uh, 6 cli to experiment let's learn from their experiment and then use that to create the policy because the policy should reflect things that can be done and things that should not be done so uh, that is how i would take it but i would encourage you to drop an email to sig architecture mailing list saying that uh, you know what you just mentioned hopefully if we do that i'm hoping the 6 cli will uh, view some of the potential problems that will happen because of this version separation ahead of time uh, right but i am expecting a cap from them when they want to do this right and i don't see a cap from them yet yes in fact they delayed the whole extraction to 124 which means that probably the cap is delayed as well right so then we can deal with it in the cap too let's not make a policy ahead of the cap Yes, it feels like we are like making a decision. Uh, like everybody is free to make a decision. Separate six are going to make their own decision. Like in six year why? I'm not sure if they're communicating with six release on the topic. Uh, for instance, they it's just so a lack of communication is why the previous initiatives died because like they were talking about how to work with releases and then six release and there was a lack of communication between CLI release and. similarly with cubeadm and that is why the whole thing was closed so this is what we were trying to solve is basically if we could come up with a cap by talking to everyone and getting like everyone's concrete opinion so maybe that could drive the effort uh ash what i would suggest is like start with cubectl start with 6 cli guide them to a cap that will be acceptable to sig release and go with it at that point So uh, just to confirm the cap would be about the actual extraction right because initially we were planning just a cap about the policy but you no just if you can't write policy before policy before data. okay yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. well i you know uh, just to, so you know i slightly disagree about uh, the concern that we have we can have the policy later we have a lot of smart people and we have been participating in the releases all sorts of different software it's not uh, our new uh, uh, here is the problem right the problem is there is enough obstacles in their way i don't want to add to their obstacles at this point because uh, at this rate we'll never get anything out of uh, kk repository well it's also not a good idea to rush things because it, after all this is the most important uh, client for communicate with the api server i agree with you and you know i it's they are in charge 6 cli is in charge let them come up with a cap we'll discuss on the cap and if at that point if we think we need a policy we can write a policy at that time like i don't want if we write a policy now uh, they, they they might just say fuck it so with 6 cli like the problems they are facing is like uh, they do not understand the release parts about like the crel and everything and that is where i think nabarun said that like he could come into picture and help so they are uh, like they do not understand like how the releasing would work and cycles and artifacts so that is where it gets just blocked but i think i get your point like talking to cli folks and coming up with a cap with them is the way right. to person yeah and and the other problem here is also is like i don't know i'm just frustrated with this whole thing uh because i i have a feeling that sig release is not helping you know and it's it's not empowering sig cli to make a dis- make a set of decisions that will work for them so there is one set of frustrations around that uh between um uh, i mean sig sig release should be helping drive this discussion and they are being reactive rather than proactive and i don't like it right um that is one thing the other one is uh, the implications of things uh yes uh 
and the CLI that owns these implications um, of version skew and whatnot, right? So they are the first line of defense, right? They know what they are doing. And yes, we can all help uh, uh, them tweak the things that uh, they would like to do, but we shouldn't be driving it because we don't know all the things. Like, for example, even the, um, anyway, let's, let me not go back that far. Uh, so I, I would say the SIG CLI has a pen, whether they know it or not. And SIG CLI, is, a SIG release has to help, whether they want to or not at this point. Yeah, I, you know, I think that uh, the current version SKU policy is actually owned by SIG Architecture, which is the client API server SKU. Uh, yeah, they could control it. They could change it with your approval. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, something else I think is that you, you probably remember the cap I did for QBADM. It unfortunately okay. ended up uh, as, a, as a bike shed uh, uh, forum with uh, 200 plus comments and we didn't do anything because I right. think one of the reasons for that was that we didn't talk ahead of time. And uh, the, the, way, the way we are doing... Uh, with the approach of uh, six CLI producing a cap, uh, I think we are, it's like skipping work group LTS and going right to the cap that somebody has to produce. And, uh, I, you know, I uh, slightly don't like this idea. I'm not saying that we have to have a working group for this. Maybe we can talk in different meetings, but it's just, I think, I think we are skipping uh, the discussion phase. So I'm saying don't skip the discussion phase. Add it to the agenda of SIG release go talk to them and invite the six CLI folks to come there. Add an agenda into six CLI meeting and get the release folks to show up there. So get the two sets of people to talk to, uh, 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 talk to each other, right? Okay, so you suggested that we should use the SIG release meeting for this uh, forum. Hey, absolutely, go, go for it, right? Like make people twist their arms, get them to talk to each other. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we can do that. Uh, and I guess the central point of uh, a result is going to be the cap. Yes, yes. There has to be a cap for how kubectl will look in the future and what are the phases to get there. Um, similar to Docker Shim, right? Like we said, 122, 121 will do this, 122 will do this, 123 will do this, 124 will do this, 125 it's gone, right? So I, I want a similar set of phases to get to the point where like, okay, four, four releases down the line is exactly when we'll be able to do this and what the users can expect at that point in time. Yeah, it's going to be a hard switch uh, for a lot of infrastructure setups. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we have to announce it ahead of time. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to exactly, be interesting. Exactly, yeah. We have to do all the kinds of things that we end up, ended up doing for a bunch of other caps too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I guess a quick comment about staging. Uh, like we call it, the current process is uh, we have these repositories, but do you see them completely decoupling in a similar, similar way in the future? Yeah, the CRI API is the next one um, uh, I'm shooting for because there is a need for C advisor to call yeah. uh, Q, uh, Kubernetes, uh, you know, kubelet and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'm talking to some of the SIG node folks to uh, like completely cut off uh, CRI API. Yes, yeah, uh, I know this problem, yes. Right. The, okay, the so recursion loop thing, yeah. The, 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 stance, the stance is basically what is currently in staging, we want to eventually split it. Right. So for QBADM, I have a slightly different thinking, you know, that I, I was thinking about, which is like we need to build a community around QBADM that is interested in QBADM, that is involved in QBADM, that wants to do more things to QBADM, take it to the future own the releases for QBDM, like run it as a separate 
thing uh, which is useful in its own, like including the things that you've been talking about, like using QBDM as a library and whatnot, right? So that that angle should probably drive the need for QBDM being a separate project rather than, okay, we need to kick uh, code out of KK, right? Like, so we need to twist it around and say, there is a need for, for building a community around a problem area with a specific set of code rather than uh, it is as a byproduct of uh, uh, pulling some code out. I just said, I just said what you mean. Uh, of course, the palette, uh, the number of colors on the palette is a lot. Uh, there are so many different flavors, uh, so many different aspects of what's going to happen to that. Yeah, uh, it, I think if you look at uh, projects like uh, COPS or CubeSpray, other deployers, you know, they uh, try to decouple the release cycles uh, from that of KK, but eventually they end up normalizing towards the same cadence, which is... Yeah. And which is not a bad thing, which is okay with me, right? Um, it, it's, you know it gives an opportunity to do a little bit more experimentation and get some new people aboard. Um, it, it just get, getting anybody to be useful and valuable in main KK is uh, a losing, losing proposition, right? Uh, we can't do good first issues. They get snapped up and like, it's, it's a nightmare trying to do, get anybody started in main KK. So um, if we have a smaller, area where okay there is a set of ci jobs around this there is you know it has its own life um outside of kk it can have its own set of uh, things right like a community around it uh, that that's what i'm looking for at this point Lubome. i can definitely see that the graded aspect of the level of noise that kk has right. uh, but you know even if we move uh, cubadm completely there's also the aspect that uh, finding contributors without staffing who are on a salary is uh, slightly difficult in cloud native. Understood. Understood. Yeah, we are getting better at this a little bit, like uh, getting some students, uh, that kind of, we are having some, uh, we allow to establish some kind of mentorship program to be able to do that for sure. Um, yeah, and it's a chicken and egg problem, right? Like people won't show up because it's still not like a separate thing. And then, so if we have that issue too. Um, and if staffing is the limitation, then we need to raise that up the chain. Like for example, when we were doing the um, uh, annual report kind of thing, right? So we should have like added that as a thing, like, okay, we need more, did we already do that? Uh, we, yeah, uh, I, I had a mention of, yeah, yeah, I had a mention about Kubernetes. Right. So, but then we have to present it as a vision saying, this is what we are trying to do. This is why we need staffing, right? Um, yeah. People, people know this It's just, uh, if somebody else can do it good for you, you don't exactly. have to get exactly. involved. Yeah, right. Uh, Yes, uh, I, I see. I see the benefits. Uh, there are also more downsides. For instance, uh, currently, Signal Network, for instance, is patching Kubeadm for us. With the removal of the door stack feature gate, we get a free change from someone mm -hmm. because Kubeadm is pipe of you know, a part of the pipeline of tests and part of the source source code, and somebody else has to do it. Otherwise. We have potential for these drifts and decoupling, which will be caused if we have something in a separate repo, but that's a side effect. Yeah, and it's definitely something that you have to lead. Like, if you want to do it, then we can like figure out how to do it. Uh, and, you know, you will have to end up taking the lead on it. Yeah, it's a uh, communication has to be enhanced if we yeah. separate. Right. It's going to, uh, I, I, at this point, like I told, at the begin, I told you at the beginning, I'm fine either way, uh, staying in KK, moving out of KK, who is writing the caps. I, I don't have strong opinions at this point. It's it, a lot of time passed. Yeah. Uh, but if, if, if we, that's, that's the way you see it, uh, I mean, that's the way we're going to go. 
let's talk to like Vince and uh, some other folks uh, in Cluster Lifecycle 2 to see if they have uh, any opinions on it and see. Yes, the Cluster API folks uh, have been mostly silent, uh, but uh, we can bring them into the discussion. Hey, we have this release meeting. Please join if you're interested. In the topic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else on your agenda, Arsh? No. So the actionable item is to talk to SIG release and CLI and get them to yeah. in meetings. Yeah. Force okay. them to talk about <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and use Lubovitz's old presentation. <laughs> Don't waste time doing anything more because then it's just like you know just like the cap he was talking about where there was all bike shedding 200 comments nobody wants to do anything nobody wants to help but they have to put in their two cents right so and th that's becoming worse uh, over time so uh, do what you can and we can talk again all right, all right. thank you thank you i think we can end the meeting bye folks sounds good bye, -bye.